Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's lecture. Today, I want to revisit one of the points from last weekend because we had a lot of calls with questions about this. So I want to make sure that everyone understands it fully. It's an important point. The last part of last week's lecture, I presented an answer from Lantos uh, to a question which I had asked Cindy to ask him. The question was, if we use the song to create for a specific desire instead of for a seed, do we still place the desire within the correct, quadra uh, correct quadrant, such as quality or dimension? So the idea, as you know, Lantos has said that you can use the moon wings to select a seed for a specific desire. And when using the moon wings, you can focus on the very specific desire, I am perfect digestion. Or if you're not sure what it is that you need, or if you want the highest path, then you can use that specific intent Lantos gave us, I am the way. So let's take a, a quick diversion and talk about that. What is the difference? Because Lantos specifically said, if you know exactly what you want, you can use that desire when throwing the moon wings, or if you want some to find a supportive seed or to find the highest path, you may use I am the way. Let's say that you are going to the store and you've taken that trip many times and you know the way to get there. Uh, you can just drive there. You don't need to use your GPS. But let's say you're going to a store and you don't know where it is. Well, then you need to use your GPS. That would be the equivalent of using I am the way because you don't really know how to get where you're going. It could be that you, you know what you need, but you have no idea which store carries it. Again, that's where you need help. Uh, that's where you use I am the way. You know what the outcome is that you want, but you don't know how to get there. You use I am the way. But let's say that you do know the store that you're going to. You go there all the time. You know the path you're going to get there. But if you were to take a different path, it would be easier. I gave this example last week. Maybe there's a traffic jam on the way to the store, uh, the path that you would normally take. So this is the concept of the highest path. The highest path takes into consideration other elements that you are not aware of and you may never be aware of it. It could be that your GPS takes you on a route that you think is going to be five minutes longer, but in fact saves you 45 minutes because the road was closed due to a traffic jam or an accident, and you would never have even known it. All you knew is that for some reason the GPS took me on a longer route. This is the concept of seeking the highest path. It doesn't prevent you from using your specific desire it just means that even though you use your specific desire, you might also want to throw the moon wings using I am the way. Again, I mentioned this last week. Now, when you do your creating, it's the same concept. You can throw the moon wings, use I am the way, get a seed, and then enliven that seed. And Lantos has made it clear that that seed contains within it the form of your desire. So if you know your desire, uh, let's say finding a home where you will be happy, you need to move, uh, you're selling your home or your lease is up and you need to move to a new place, you don't really know what you're looking for, you use I am the way or you use your specific desire, a home where I'll be happy. You can do either one, that's totally fine. But if you use I am the way, it helps you with the highest path. But you throw the moon wings and they will give you a specific seed, a seed to enliven. That seed, let's say it's something like billowing bubbles. And you think, well, that has nothing to do with finding my home. How am I supposed to you know, find a new home by enlivening billowing bubbles? The whole concept of the seeds is that on their surface, they may not make any sense to you. Even the wording may not make sense to you. Or it may make sense to you, but you have no idea how it applies to your situation. That's okay. Your desire is contained within that seed. So enlivening that seed will still enliven your desire. But it will do so taking into account every aspect. Those aspects that you can't see. 
as well as those that you can both see and understand. So that's the advantage of enlivening seeds. But then you may still have that thought, but I know what my desire is. In this example, a home where I'll be happy. Why can't I just enliven that also? You can. You can enliven that, and you can enliven the seed that you found using the moon wings. There's nothing preventing you from enlivening both, enlivening both of those things, so you can certainly enliven your desire. So then you're relieved, thinking, great, now I can enliven my specific desire. Uh, now, let's see, a home where I'll be happy. That goes into object, the quadrant of object. So do I need to use the wand? Perhaps I hold the wand in my left hand with the song. Uh, what do I do with that? That's what this, uh, this specific particular question was for, is do we need to worry about placing the desire within the quadrants when we enliven the desire using the song of the spheres? And this was Lantos' answer. We offer our deepest thanks for the path which has led to the goal. The value of the path is fulfilled in the arrival at the goal. With the arrival of the golden form of initial rotations, the path which has offered connection to this supreme process of creating is fulfilled. The steps which were required along the path are no longer required. The supreme tool enlivens the process of initial rotations, automatically placing each desire, each intent, within the correct quadrant. The song is the supreme tool of Tote. We offer our deepest thanks to our beloved master teacher Tote for the arrival of the golden form and the supreme tools. So this is the answer that I wanted us to focus on because in that answer, Lantos talks about the path that we have been taking, the tools we have taken along that path are no longer necessary. So what does that mean? Does it mean that the other tools are useless, that we don't use them anymore? No, not at all. Does it mean that the creating practice is useless, that we don't need to do that anymore? Not, a, not at all. Again, remember, just two months ago, Cindy asked Lantus a question about, well, when we enliven the seed for a desire, or we just enliven a seed and we spin the way three times, is that all we do? Or can we do something after that? Because spinning the way three times, you know, you can do that in 15, 20 seconds. So can we do something after that? And Lanto specifically said, yes, you may then continue to do your creating practice. So that would mean if you're simply enlivening a seed, putting the wheel that's relevant to that seed on the seed marker on your flying seed, and then enlivening that seed using your creating practice after you have spun the way three times with the song or the medallion. You can easily do that if you are using the song to create a specific desire. Let's stick with our example, a home where I'll be happy. You can spin the way three times using that specific desire, a home where I'll be happy. And then you can set the song down, pick up the pendant of eternal light in your left hand, the wand of Genesis in your right hand, and then do the creating practice for a home where I'll be happy, placing it within the quadrant of object. So not only is there no problem with that, but Lanto specifically said that we can do that for as long as we want after we spin the way of the song or the medallion. And then just one or two weeks after that, Lanto said that we can spin the way as many times as we want. We just always want to make sure to do it in groups of three. So you spin the way three times on the song and then you think, I want to do that another time. Great, spin it three more times. And then you think a third time would be great. Fine, you can spin it another three times. You can spin it as many times as you want. Just make sure that you do it in groups of three. And then after that, if you want to create, go ahead and create. There's no problem with creating, and it's not that it is no longer effective or useful. It's that you have a tool that makes it a little bit easier. Now, an example, an analogy. Let's say that you have an older car, and it is a manual, a stick shift, uh, and the battery has died just a little bit, and you can't start it. And many of you have done this in days past or decades past. 
Uh, if you push the car to get it going a certain speed, five miles per hour or so, and then you pop the clutch, and that will start the engine, and then you've got a car that's running. So let's take that analogy. What do you, what do you have to do to start? Well, you have to enlist the help of some friends or strangers to help you push the car, and those first few seconds, the first few feet that you are moving the car, that's the hardest part because you have to overcome the inertia. There is a certain significant amount of resistance to your efforts before you get the car moving. And so this would be the equivalent of our very early days with creating. We were doing the creating practice, but we were just building the energy on Earth. So the creating practice, while still completely effective for what we were doing, the results weren't as visible. Uh, that first foot that you move the car, it's fully effective because you're accomplishing exactly what you need to accomplish. You're getting the car going, and that first foot is the hardest foot for you to push the car. It's the hardest foot that you're going to be traveling over the entire journey. So even though you've only traveled 12 inches, only, even though you've only traveled a very short distance, it's required tremendous effort, but it has been fully effective for what it was intended to accomplish. Then you build up more momentum. The next 10 feet, the next 20 feet, the next 30 feet, uh, that becomes a lot easier because you've got momentum on your side. And then you get enough speed that you can hop in the car or someone's sitting in the car and they can pop the clutch. And if you're going fast enough, it starts the engine. And then you're in a car with a running engine. You can drive 60 miles an hour down the highway. You can make very good speed having the air conditioning on, being comfortable, drinking juice in the car. You can be completely relaxed. And when you think about it, you know, we wouldn't think this at all because we're accustomed to the concept of riding in a car where it makes everything very easy. But imagine that you're sitting in that car thinking something's wrong. This is far too easy. I should be out pushing the car because at least when I was pushing the car, I could see that I was accomplishing something because I was using so much effort. Uh, I, I could tell that what I was doing was yielding a result. Now I'm just sitting here and yes, I see things passing by me, you know, along the windows. I see the trees and the houses and the other cars passing by, but I don't feel like I'm doing anything. What you did was you accomplished a tremendous feat during that first period of time when you were beginning to push the car and then building up momentum, pushing the car until you were able to get the engine rolling, until you were getting the engine started and the car moving on its own. So that beginning period of time, you don't disparage it. You don't bemoan it. You don't say, I wish I were back doing that necessarily because you are very thankful for what you have now and what you've, what you've accomplished. But it doesn't mean that what you did to get the car going was useless or a waste of time. Not only was it very useful, not only was it not a waste of time, it was absolutely essential to get you to the point where the car was actually going to be running. So with the song, with the medallion. Do you have to do the creating practice? No, you don't. Because the tool itself will properly place the desire in the correct quadrant. It makes the creating practice much easier for you. It is the exact same creating practice. It uses initial rotations. It is the same process of creating that Lantas described to us in beautiful detail during the course of eternal life, the course of creating. All of that is still completely accurate for what we are doing when we do creating with the song and the medallion. It's just that we don't have to do the same technique that we did in the early years because now we have a new tool that makes it a lot easier for us. But just like you, I really enjoy the creating practice using the tools, using the quadrants, and there's nothing wrong with still doing that. But add in the song. Do your creating with the song. Create for a specific desire. Create for a specific seed that supports that desire. And then still do your creating practice. That's entirely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 
And I should also point out, because we've even had this question come up over the last week, what about the other tools and treatments? What about using the flame of Genesis in a treatment, the wand of Genesis, the bio oscillator, anything like that? Those tools are all still fully effective. Not only are they fully effective, they're more effective now because of the increased light on Earth. The eon of eternal light makes those tools even more effective. So it is the opposite of, do we just stop using them? In fact, it is now we use them even more with greater ease, greater efficiency, greater efficacy. They are more effective today than they were when you started using them 15 years ago. So even though we've had great experience in the past, and nearly every one of you has heard me talk about those experiences at the introductory lectures or at the weekend seminars, and I told you all about the great experiences we've had with those tools, we continue to have great experiences. We continue to have experiences even this year, dealing with cancer, dealing with arthritis, dealing with so many diseases as well as physical traumas, they're all the same experiences that I've told you over the past 10, 20 years. We continue to get those experiences and we get them using the tools, using the bio oscillator, the bio amplifier, the flame, the wand. Just three days ago, I had a friend who was cooking dinner and burned himself very badly on his hand. And I happened to have the bio amplifier, so I pulled it out. We sat down for 10 minutes. I used it over his hand for 10 minutes. And then the next morning, he called me to let me know that it was just a very bit tender, just a tiny bit of pain, but that was it. And he was positive because he, he was a chef and he knew what these burns would do to him. He knew that there was going to be blistering. He knew there was going to be scarring. He knew what the pain was going to be and for how long it was going to be there. And yet the next morning, hardly any pain, no scarring, no blistering, everything, pretty much back to normal with the exception of only a little bit of pain. So we see the tools are not only still relevant, still effective, they are more relevant. They are more effective. The only thing that we don't have to rely upon the tools entirely for now is building up the light because the song and the medallion are doing that to a much greater extent. They are building up the light. And what Lantos had said, remember he, has, he spoke about the tidal wave of light that would come upon creation when we have a million people using the song and the medallion. When we have a million people spinning the way, it will generate a tidal wave of light on creation. I'm going to end the lecture today the same way I ended last week, by reading just those two, three sentences from Lantos talking about this great light that is going to come because of the song and the medallion, but we only have the song and the medallion because of all that you did with your creating practice, with the tools, placing your desires in the quadrants, using the tools in treatments, using them on yourself for just a few minutes each day. Those 5, 10, 15 minutes that you spent each day doing the treatments, doing the creating, generated a lot of assistance for you in your life, but it also generated tremendous light for the entire world, which allowed the world to make it through the great transformation safely and then, which allowed there to be enough light for us to have the new tools, the song and the medallion. So here is what Lanta said at the end of the message that we read last week. This is the glory of the eon of eternal light. The light will grow. The light will expand continent by continent. The light will then burst into the radiance of 10 million suns, offering holy vision to thousands around the world. This, dear ones, is a new eon. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining me today. I enjoyed this lecture because it's so exciting being able to look to the future, being able to see what's on the horizon, the great things that are coming, but it's also so rewarding 
to look at all of the efforts that we have done over the past. You, your friends, your family, all of the people who have come to the seminars and the lectures, the people who have used their tools all around the world, all of you have brought us to this point where we have these tools that will bring this light and that have brought to us this new eon of eternal light. So thank you very much for everything that you have done for the past 20 years and that you continue to do. Have a great week, and I will talk to you next week.